I have to say it's really an honor uh, to return and spend a weekend with so many interesting and creative people. It's, this is such a great and fun time. I'm, it's a real honor for me to be here. So thanks, Jared, a lot. Um, uh, yeah, so these are just some things that are out in the woods right now. You know, there's, I'll, I'll just really quickly tell you what the, the, the really interesting looking mushroom on the log is, a, is a, they call them dryad saddles or some folks call them pheasant back. They're not, they don't taste very good, but they're really pretty. You can eat them. Then the other one's a morel. You guys know what those are. And my favorite greens, the, the little greens, the, the picture that's all green, those are stinging nettles. And, and they'll sting you real bad if you touch them. It's painful, but they're delicious. They're the best green, actually. So if you see those, in the, they're out in the woods right now. And then the, the leeks, those are wild leeks, uh, or ramps, they call them. Uh, so those are all out in the woods right now, actually. So get out in the woods uh, after the conference. <coughs> right, so um, where are we at? Some, some of you might remember. Uh, Two years ago, uh, when we were all together, um, we had the premiere of the 3JS package. That's, that's what I spoke about then. Um, but today, I'd like to, uh, to tell you the story about the ongoing updates of, of that package and, and uh, the changes that we're making, and importantly, how those changes uh, came about. Um, and I, I'm really lucky to follow the Crunch guys because Everything I have to say totally uh, agrees with their message, um, except relative to just one specific package instead of in general. So that it was, it's a really good segue. Um, and, I, and I'd like to take the license. I'm not sure that, that uh, I'm worthy of this, but, but I'm going to try to, uh, to tell you this story about this package um, in the style of Patrick Burns. Um, and if you don't, you know, Patrick is one of the kind of leading spiritual lights of S and S plus and R. And if you don't know Pat's work, I think, you, you know, look it up and, and read some of his stuff. You'll really enjoy it. He's an amazing, amazing person. So we'll talk about uh, what, what I've been doing and what my colleagues and contributors have been doing to help uh, improve uh, the silly package that we wrote a few years ago. Um, and at the beginning of a new, so I, I remember, um, when I first I, I very distinctly remember when I first encountered Ramnath's HTML widgets over two years ago, uh, just prior to release, actually, and, and I was immediately excited and saw the potential uh, for what you could do with that. It was it was really uh, it really impressed me, and and also not just the potential for what you could do with HTML widgets, but Ramnath and JJ and others really thought thought about it carefully, and they developed a very uh, elegant API that made it easy for schmucks like me to, to try to, as you saw earlier today when Ramnath spoke, it's fairly easy to de deploy these things. And at the time, uh, some colleagues of mine and I were working on uh, some really, some, some algorithms that, that had application to really large scale problems, uh, including some network problems. And then, you know, of course, I tried to visualize, you know, you wanted to, sometimes you want to look at a, a plot or something, and we tried to visualize some of our results. And it, it didn't really work very well in R with the available tools, um, you know, mostly because of performance reasons, because we were looking at kind of large scale stuff. Um, and so, you know, I thought, oh man, I just saw this cool HTML widgets thing, and there are these awesome JavaScript high performance visualization libraries that I could glue into R in a portable way. And I got very enthusiastic about it and decided to, to go that route. Alternatively, I could have learned, you know, I think Gephi and some other programs probably would have done what I wanted to do. But like Jared, I just use R really, and I, you know, I don't want to learn any other computer stuff, right? So. Um, <laughs> So I figured, why not? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see, see what we can do. Um, and, and so doing that, releasing packages quickly um, is an excellent way to channel creativity and enthusiasm and energy and passion that you have about a new project. Um, unfortunately, I didn't know anything about JavaScript. I'm not really a programmer, despite what, what Jared said. Um, and as, as my friends will tell you, I'm the last person in this room that should be touching visualization problems, right? So I had a lot of things going against me um, with this project. And so I think it's also important to release things slowly. Um, so you should, you should 
you should you know, channel your enthusiasm about projects and get stuff out there, but then step back and, and, and fix all the stupid things you did, right? People say move fast and break things, but they, they forget to say you need to relax every once in a while and fix all that stuff. Um, and so that, that's, that's what I would say. And I'll, I'll give you some specific examples about that. Um, uh, in, 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 uh, well, look, you end up spending time on stupid projects like spinning globes of mushroom vegetation around the earth and stuff like that. <laughs> I can't tell you how much time I spent on this silly globe. And I know D-Rob loves them, but it's just really kind of, you know, silly. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so, so, so release quickly and, and slowly. Um, and blaze new trails, right? You've got new ideas. We all have, every once in a while, we've got new ideas and, and perhaps completely new approaches to solving problems, right? So you want to get out there and, and show the world your Europe, and look, this is sage advice, right, from none other than, I think it was Ralph Waldo Emerson is famous for advocating this approach, right, to, to, to take the trail not, uh, and Frost, many people have said things like this, right? So blazing trails is really, and I definitely wanted to blaze new trails with this high performance visualization library for R. And yet, <laughs> unless you happen to be Hadley Wickham, you should really think carefully about introducing new approaches to doing things. Um, there are very few of us that are, have the ability uh, uh, to coherently show people new approaches to, to, to solving problems. And I'll, I'll give you a, a specific example of that right now with a little bit of code. Uh, in, 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 this, in this case, of, for the 3JS package, the first version had um, I wrote this bespoke kind of network visualization syntax that was truly awful. I mean, it just totally sucked. So not only, um, you know, at the time, I think I must have thought it was great or something, but I mean, it was just really bad. And, and so not only was I, not only did people who wanted to use the package have to learn something new, but they had to learn something new that was really dumb, right? So it was just terrible. Um, and it, it turns out that uh, Gabor Zardi, the author of iGraph, which you know is the kind of the premier network analysis and visualization package for R, Gabor had put a lot of thought into the subtleties of of doing network visualization, and um, uh, so I decided to, in, in, in the updates, adopt uh, Gabor's um, style. So, so let me. Uh, let me show you an example of that. So here's, I'll, I'll load the iGraph package and plot an iGraph uh, object with Gabor's package. Um, hello? Is it, is it coming here? What's going on? Um, oops. Oh, this is strange. Sorry about this. I guess Ramnath had some similar glitches. <laughs> What's going on here? Yeah. Ah. So, you know, funnily enough, Gabor's package is not rendering on R. This is R3.4, which was just installed last night, and I didn't try this example. <laughs> It's not my package. This is iGraph. <laughs> so um, with 3JS, um, <laughs> you, get, you get the plot of the graph. Um, using import, the point here is that I'm, I'm, I've adopted Gabor's syntax. And so somebody who already knows iGraph doesn't have to learn anything new, right? They want to they wanna use the 3JS package. They just can dr literally drop in what they've been doing before. But instead of just getting a static plot, they get you know, an interactive plot that, that, that they can play around with, right? Um, and, and I'll show you that these can be quite high performance. Um, now, uh, it, sometimes you want to blaze a new trail. Um, and, and this isn't really blazing a trail. It's just, it's just changing from one trail to another. Originally, I followed uh, the syntax for 3D scatter plots from the scatterplot 3D package, which is an old one. But then I, I decided, uh, with some urging from colleagues of mine, to use the pipeline um, kind of syntax, or to re rewrite, to break compatibility with scatterplot 3D to enable pipelining for things like points and lines, which makes it very easy to kind of overlay text and points or different types of glyphs on, on a plot. And that, that I think, so occasionally there's room for breaking with tradition and going your own way. But don't do it too often, in, in, unless, you're, unless you're Hadley. 
Um, and then you can do, do anything. Um, right, so let's go back to the slides. Um, so yeah, so both, it's important to both blaze new trails and follow, follow paths. Um, let's see where are we at. Uh, this is this is really nice. So so again, this really fits well with the Crunch I/O message. So you want to encourage contributions and be as inclusive as possible. And fortunately, we live in like the golden age of this with GitHub and all of these tools that are available to us. It's a lot better than the old days. Um, and I'll show you an example that I find uh, really amazing. So almost two years ago, uh, right after the package came out, um, this person filed a bug, uh, an issue, a bug, on, on GitHub against the 3JS package. And he was having trouble using it with Shiny. And I poured over it for a long time, and I couldn't, I couldn't find anything wrong. So I, I, I talked to Joe Chang and, and filed a bug on, on Shiny, uh, at, 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 uh, on the Shiny project at RStudio, this, this bug over here. And then Joe looked at it for a long time. He looked at the Shiny code for a long time, and he couldn't find anything wrong. So he traced the problem to the 3JS package in JavaScript and filed a bug against 3JS in a different language, right? And so Ricardo Cabello, the author of um, 3JS, eventually fixed the bug in the 3JS JavaScript library. And thanks to the magic of GitHub, that can cascade all the way through. So we had three different software projects in two different languages with a common bug that was all linked and could be resolved all at once. It's truly amazing what these tools can do today. And I encourage you, everybody, to use GitHub. There, it's, when I saw this, I, I just couldn't believe it. So it's all resolved now, and everything works beautifully. Um, so really, it's, the ecosystem is remarkable today. Having said that, we also need to be pretty selective sometimes. And, and this is painful. You have, to, you have to do it in a way that, w so sometimes contributions are made that just aren't appropriate, or you know, somebody had some other idea in mind that, that you had, and, you, and you, need to, you need to draw the line somewhere. Um, sometimes you can, you can have a bot do that, though. So a, a neat trick is to use Jim Hester's linter package and set up a linter bot which all it does is enforce uh, code style. But surprisingly, that little amount of rigor in the enforcement, which you can completely automate and have the rejection notice be sent by a bot to the pull requester, um, that, that's enough of a, a friction to, to keep out, to force people to think about what they're pulling, what they're, what they're trying to contribute back to your package. So, so consider using Jim Hester's tools and, and the Travis Continuum, uh, continuous integration uh, service, along with things like Linter. Um, beyond that, though, occasionally you do have to, and, and I've been in this situation a couple of times, and it's difficult, and you need to reject contributions in a way that encourages the authors to either go their own way or to set up a parallel project or something like that. Try to be uh, you know, diplomatic about it, um, but we, we have to be both inclusive and, and selective in, in open source software. We just don't want to have a jumble of uh, mess. You want to have a vision uh, that's pure, but, but also inclusive. Um, and it's important to speak about what you're doing. Um, you know, I'm, for, for most of you, that means, you know, what is it, Twitter and Slack, right, DRob. But I'm of a generation where th this is kind of, you know, like human, this is what I, this is speaking for me. Um, but, 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 you know, there are analogs that are electronic that, that are important. It's important to, to get the message out so that you can get that inclusiveness into your, into your packages. But after you do that, it's really important to listen to what everybody who's playing with your stuff is doing. Um, and um, so over the years, uh, my friends like, like David Robinson and uh, James Curley uh, have, have given me some ideas and helped me shape the, 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 the features in the package. And I, and I want to show you a few examples of that right now. So James Curley is a psychologist. He uh, was at Columbia. I think he may have moved now right, to uh, Austin. But, um, and he wanted to animate graphs. right? Because, and for the same reason that I wanted to do large scale visualization, he was unhappy with the tools he had to use uh, to do that. Um, and so uh, James and I worked out a syntax for that that's really easy. Instead of supplying, so, so this thing, uh, uh, the idea of a graph is like an eye graph object. It's a collection of vertices and edges. And the layout is simply the, the three-dimensional coordinates of each vertex, right? It's just a, like a 3D matrix, XYZ coordinates. 
Um, so so to, an to animate vertices, James suggested, let's just, instead of supplying a single layout, let's just, let's just do a list. And, and it works very well, and this is, all, this is really all James. So if you do that with the GraphJS package, and, and again, I, again, I'm just supplying a, a list um, instead of a, a single layout, um, you get a, a, a dynamic graph, but it's still interactive, right? So this is uh, Knuth's Les Miserables um, co character co-occurrence network being rendered with different kinds of graph layout algorithms uh, quite, quite nicely. Um, and similarly to um, um, vertices, you can also either independently or together, you can, you can animate edges Again, by simply supplying now a list of graphs instead of just a single graph, if you give it a, a list, you can, you can have um, the edges change over, over time. And that FPL argument is just kind of like a frame rate uh, crudely for, for, for this. So that was a, a really great idea from a user who is using this for real visualizations in, in uh, research settings. And it really um, enhanced the package uh, tremendously. Um, and, and I just got that by, by carefully listening. And then, so just, just a few months ago, was it in January or something like that, D-Rob, he was saying, oh yeah, that, that's that graph package that you can click on things and, and, they'll, and they'll, and I said, no, it doesn't do that. You know, he wanted to be able to click on a vertex uh, to, to have kind of a, a, a collapsed graph and then expand it dynamically. And it didn't do that, but, it, but he gave me the idea. So now it, it does do that, in fact. <laughs> I can show you, uh, and this is, it's, it, I'm not going to go into how it works because it's a little bit more complicated to set up, but it's not that bad. This is, again, the same kind of Les Miserables uh, co-occurrence matrix, but now only showing, I used kind of a graph cluster community detection algorithm to, to pick out just the most central node. So here's, of course, Jean Valjean, and if we click on him now, we expand his network and, and we can see all the other characters that are connected to him, or if we go over here to Gavroche, we can, we can click on that and get very nicely condensed and interactive um, uh, plots this way. Uh, so thanks, D. Rob. Where are you? Thanks. Thanks for that. There you go. That's all you. It's not on Cran yet, but it, but it will be soon. Um, and f and um, let's see, where are we at now? So that's vertex animation and click interaction. And, and I just want to, sh to close this talk to show you a nice, this actually is included with the package. I'll just type this. There's a, a subset of the Facebook ego graph included in the package from the Stanford Network Analysis Repository. So you guys can download it from GitHub right now and plot this. Um, let me just do this, graph.js, ego, bg equals black. And this will give you a sense of the performance of the thing, right? Because so far we've only looked at little, this is a fairly large visualization of like 100,000 edges. And this is running on my Chromebook, you know, a $200 Google Chromebook that's running Ubuntu, right? So like it's the, the perf there's, you know, this is the reason I wrote this package, to be able to take fairly complex, large scale data sets and fluidly visualize them on, you know, cheap hardware um, of the kind that I use. Um, so I'm listening, uh, so please, and I'm inclusive. So if you want, and, I, and this, these changes haven't got made their way on CRAN yet because I need Ramnath's help with, one, with something, actually. So I'm, later today, I'll ask him about it. There's a few issues that are still outstanding, but, but look for this soon. And you've got a window there. If you want some other snazzy feature, let me know, you know later today, and I'll, and I'll stick it in there. So again, um, it's such an honor to hang out with all you guys. So thanks. Thank you.